So friends, the longest serving federal judge in Washington, D.C. just issued an opinion calling out the lies of Donald Trump and his allies when they refer to the January 6 defendants as hostages. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, a federal district court judge in Washington, D.C., indeed the longest serving federal district court judge in D.C., 37 years on the bench and counting, a judge that was appointed by President Ronald Reagan, just issued a legal opinion in a case involving one of the January 6 defendants. And the judge made it pretty clear that he has had enough of both the defendants and the politicians misrepresenting what happened at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th and their BS claim that those who attacked the U.S. Capitol on January 6th trying to stop the transfer of presidential power are hostages. The judge is Judge Royce Lambreth. And if you'll indulge me a very short personal story of Judge Lamberth's 37 years on the bench. I occupied six months of those 37 years because one of the RICO cases I prosecuted, I tried. Judge Lamberth presided over that case. And I will tell you, I hold Judge Lamberth in extremely high regard. I consider him to be a lion of the federal bench in Washington, D.C. Indeed, he is well regarded nationally. And I will say one of the very few handwritten notes that I display in my office is from Judge Lamberth. It is not about the RICO case I tried in front of him or any other case that I had before him. Um, but as I say, I hold him in very high regard. So I was keenly interested in this new legal opinion that he just authored. Here's what I want to do today, friends. I want to start by reading a little bit of the new reporting, and then I want to read just about a page or two of Judge Lamberth's seven-page order. I will post a link to Judge Lamberth's order in the description for this video if you want to read it in its entirety. But let's start with the new reporting. This from Kyle Cheney of Politico. Headline, Preposterous. Federal judge decries efforts to downplay January 6th violence, label perpetrators hostages. And that article begins, the longest serving district judge on the federal bench in Washington, D.C. warned Thursday that false rhetoric about the January 6th attack on the Capitol, including the sorts of lies hurled by former President Donald Trump and some of his congressional allies, poses an ongoing danger to the nation. Judge Royce Lamberth, a Reagan appointee to the bench, said the destructive misinformation spread by political leaders who have downplayed and misrepresented the attack had become pervasive. Quote, in my 37 years on the bench, I cannot recall a time when such meritless justifications of criminal activity have gone mainstream, Lamberth lamented in a seven-page public court filing. Though he did not mention Trump by name, Lamberth specifically called out language used by Trump and, more recently, Trump allies like Representative Elise Stefanik, describing January 6 defendants as hostages. Now, friends, let's turn to Judge Lamberth's opinion. It's in the case of United States of America versus James Little, defendant, convicted defendant, not political prisoner, not hostage, convicted defendant, and the convicted defendant who refused to take any responsibility for his own crimes. Here is, in part, what Judge Lamberth said. 
The court, meaning the judge, the court is accustomed to defendants who refuse to accept that they did anything wrong. But in my 37 years on the bench, I cannot recall a time when such meritless justifications of criminal activity have gone mainstream. I have been dismayed to see distortions and outright falsehoods seep into the public consciousness. I have been shocked to watch some political figures try to rewrite history, claiming rioters behaved in an orderly fashion, like ordinary tourists, or martyrizing convicted January 6 defendants as political prisoners or even, incredibly, hostages. That is all preposterous. But the court fears that such destructive, misguided rhetoric could presage further danger to our country. The court cannot condone the shameless attempts by Defendant Little or anyone else to misinterpret or misrepresent what happened. It cannot condone the notion that those who broke the law on January 6th did nothing wrong or that those duly convicted with all the safeguards of the United States Constitution, including the right to trial by jury in felony cases, are political prisoners or hostages. So let me set the record straight based on what I've learned presiding over many January 6 prosecutions, hearing from dozens of witnesses, watching hundreds of hours of video footage, and reading thousands of pages of evidence. On January 6, 2021, a mob of people invaded and occupied the United States Capitol, using force to interrupt the peaceful transfer of power mandated by the Constitution and our Republican heritage. This was not a protest that got out of hand. It was a riot, in many respects a coordinated riot, as is clear from cases before me, including Hostetter and Worrell. Protesters would have simply shared their views on the election, as did thousands that day who did not approach the Capitol. But those who breached and occupied the Capitol building and grounds halted the counting of the Electoral College votes required by the 12th Amendment. The rioters interfered with a necessary step in the constitutional process, disrupted the lawful transfer of power, and thus jeopardized the American constitutional order. Although the rioters failed in their ultimate goal, their actions nonetheless resulted in the deaths of multiple people injury to over 140 members of law enforcement, and lasting trauma for our entire nation. This was not patriotism. It was the antithesis of patriotism. And the rioters achieved this result through force. Not everyone present that day was violent, but violence is what let them into the Capitol. At first, a police line protected the Capitol, but eventually, law enforcement was subjected to such force by such a mass of people that the rioters pushed through. Upon entering the Capitol, many rioters vandalized and looted, some hunted for members of Congress. For Defendant Little to style himself a political prisoner and to accuse the court of infringing on his rights is not only incorrect, it is offensive to the court. The public should understand that such notions are preposterous. This is a matter of right and wrong. Defendant Little cannot bring himself to admit that he did the wrong thing, although he came close today. So it's up to the court to tell the public the truth. Defendant Little's actions and the actions of others who broke the law on January 6th were wrong. The court does not expect its remarks to fully stem the tide of falsehoods, but I hope a little truth will go a long way. Dated January 25th, 2024, by Royce C. Lamberth, United States District Judge. To which I will simply add, thank you.
Judge Lamberth. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.